Well, good evening. Glad to have you here. Welcome to Emmaus Lutheran Church, and um, and welcome to you who are watching live streamed, and um, those who will be watching later on after the sermon, the service tonight gets uploaded on Facebook and on YouTube. And we're a smaller group tonight. I'm not sure. We need to maybe make a decision. If it's meeting a need, I want to do it. But it's not like I'm not going to do Lenten services at all. You'll just be able to watch them a different way. We'll, we'll record it at home or wherever. And, um, and um, you can watch it. That, okay. Anyway, so we have a concert this coming Sunday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and hopefully it'll be beautiful and not too cool and not too hot. Probably mostly not too hot because um, I think winter's over. We have Heather Thorne with Vivacity and um, if you've taken a chance to listen to her play uh, Marimba on, uh, on YouTube, you can go to YouTube and then look up Heather Thorne and Vivacity and you'll, you'll listen to it, and it's wonderful. So I hope that all of you will be coming on Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock, bring lawn chairs. If you have, you know, one of those canopies, I think they could do that, you know, that you'd set it up there, and, um, you know, it looks like a beer tent. And uh, if you have a beer, I'm going to bring that too. Okay, and um, yeah, that's what's coming up. Anyway, let's begin our worship service now with the prayer of the baptismal font. Holy and precious God, we give you thanks for every gift and every blessing that comes from your hand of mercy. We ask you to be with us as we worship you tonight, as we lift up our words of praise to you. Help us, God, to experience the nearness of your love in all the things that we do. Let us be filled with your Holy Spirit this night. Let us be filled with the love that you have for us that you want us to have for others. We pray for our community, for our nation, and for the world. We ask, God, that you would um, attend to the needs that are out there that we see on the news every morning and every evening, that you would help our culture to reestablish itself as, as a loving culture, as a, as a culture that cares about the concerns of all. Help us, God, to be a part of that movement of love. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon this water, upon our lives, our church, our community, and the world, that your Holy Spirit would empower us to choose what is good and right as we experience um, life in your kingdom. All of this we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, I'm going to be behind the altar, and I, I think I'm going to still keep my mask on, because I don't want to be in the pulpit, but... Is this okay? Can everybody hear me? Yes. You think it's good over there? Okay, I'm, I'm going to read the gospel tonight from John chapter 15. I'm reading verses 1 through 11. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and it withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy 
may be complete. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. Um, so we have this imagery. Um, we have this imagery of the vine and the, of the branches. And uh, it's good imagery. It's an imagery that I can identify with. Uh, sometimes I have trouble with the sheep and the shepherd thing, because I'm a sheep like you. And the shepherd, the one true good shepherd is Jesus. So, so here I am, um, I, I think Pastor Nielsen shared with you, he was one of the interim pastors who was here before um, I was called as your, um, as your pastor here. And he said, think of him as a sheep dog and, and not a shepherd. And maybe that's really a good, a good imagery, but the, the imagery of the vine and the branches is really good. And it starts off, Jesus um, says half of that I am statement. I am the vine. We have to wait a few verses before we hear him say, I am the vine and you are the branches. But right here at the beginning of this text, he says, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. So God is going to tend to that vineyard. God is going to tend to, um, to those vines and to the branches of God as God the father. Um, certainly Jesus is God. Sometimes when I say God, I mean father. And when I mean Jesus, I say Jesus. When I mean the Holy Spirit, I say the Holy Spirit. That And so we have God the Father, who's the vine grower, and he knows what the vine and the branches need. And vines need to be pruned. Um, grapes need sunlight, but not too much sun. And God is at work in the vineyard. And this is an imagery. The vineyard is an image for, from the Old Testament for the people of Israel. They were called the vineyard, God's vineyard, the people that God loved and called and chose and, and blessed along the way. And, and this is how we pick up this image here, that Jesus is the vine and the Father is the vine grower. It's a wonderful image for us, and it's an image about God's love for us. Now, we hear right away that um, that the, the branches of the vine are going to be pruned. Now, it's not because the, the parts of those branches aren't loved, but branches need to be pruned. They need to be pruned so that they can bear even more fruit. That's what this passage is all about. It's about um, bearing fruit abundantly. The maximum amount, amount of fruit God wants from those branches that are us when we find ourselves and identify ourselves in this story. And, and so this passage is about bearing good fruit. In the 11 verses that I read here tonight, uh, um, bearing good fruit is mentioned six times in 11 verses. That's a lot. That's got to be significant there. Paul, or not Paul, John is trying to tell us something that is very important to, um, to him, you know, to the people of his listening community, that this abidingness, this coming together, this connectedness is very important. And the purpose of that is bearing good fruit. Keep that in mind. The purpose is bearing good fruit. Now, what does that look like for us? Um, bearing good fruit is going to be those acts of, random acts of kindness, those things that we do and say and think about that make a positive difference in our lives, the people around us, and the world. If we think of something that is helpful, let's act on it. Let's act on, um, on uh, things that relate to social justice and kindness and all of those things that help us to um, help us to care for and show our care for our neighbors, our sisters and brothers in our neighborhood. So the overwhelming, the overwhelming purpose of this reading then is that we, first of all, see that Jesus is the vine. Second of all, that the Father is the vine grower. The thirdly, that we see ourselves as the branches attached to the vine, 
And the purpose for all of that is bearing good fruit. Something else in here that's really important, abiding. My dad asked uh, Joni Hansey to play Abide With Me like she did last week because it was awesome. And I wanted to hear it again. And uh, I was telling Carol today that I don't really have an overarching theme of, for Lent this year. I didn't, you know, have a, a series that I bought into or anything. I told her this is like Lent Puri. This, um, this is just things that are in my heart right now, and I want to get them up. So the second thing that's really important in here is abiding. In verse 4, it says, abide, Jesus says, I abide, no, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So if we thought it was a lot to have the bearing fruit mentioned six times in 11 verses, abiding is, is in here 12 times in 11 verses. What is that abiding like? Um, um, what does that abiding sense mean? It's the indwelling of God um, with us. Now, a really, a really um, well-known passage comes from John chapter 14, where Jesus says, um, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. The King James Version says, in my Father's house there are many mansions. We like that one. Um, a, a good, better, probably, translation from Greek to English is, dwelling place. And here, that's the connection between abiding and, and dwelling, is that dwelling place that's been promised. That's the noun form of the verb abide. And so that abiding presence that is promised um, to us in John chapter 14, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places, many abiding places, um, or many rooms, or many mansions. And, um, and we anticipate that to be, um, that Jesus is calling us into that place of glory where, where there is a place that's being prepared for us, a place of promise, a place of glory, a place of, of hope for, um, for that new life that is promised after we finish this life. And, um, and, and in that passage, we find Jesus saying that he and the Father are, are part of each other. The Father's in me, I'm in the Father, and that the Father and the Son are indwelled, in, indwelling with the disciples, and that promise of indwelling is, is to us also, especially through the Holy Spirit, that we invite upon the one being baptized in, in our baptism. We invite the Holy Spirit to come. So all of this abiding presence to, um, assures to us the connectedness that we have with God, with God's love for us, um, with his son Jesus Christ who loved us so much that he gave up his life on the cross so that we are saved from sin, so that we don't have to live in, in sin or guilt or shame. We don't have to leave tonight with the same dark, sick feelings that we came in here with tonight. So, we've looked at abide. We've looked at bearing fruit. We've, we've looked at the, the idea of abiding, because apart from Jesus, you can do, I, I, I like to use this passage for a wedding a lot of times. Um, some, sometimes the couple doesn't have any idea what passage to choose, and I like to choose this one because I like to say that, you know, it, you two, you know, you're, you're getting married and you're creating your own family, but don't forget that Jesus is a part of your family, that, that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is with you, and that God is a part of this mixture here. And, and I say, apart from the vine that Jesus offers to us, apart from that, we can do nothing. Nothing. And, and I like to say, conversely, with Jesus, we could do anything. Yeah? Attached to the vine, we can do anything. And, and uh, 
So we're talking about abiding here. That's the first of two imperatives. The other imperative here, after we are established as being those who are abiding branches with the, um, with the vine, the second imperative is this, ask. So it says right here, if you abide in me, in verse 7, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. That's quite a big promise. It's in, uh, it's in John chapter 14, it's in John chapter 16, that whatever we ask for in Jesus' name will be given to us. So let's get down to the business here. What do we want? I mean, this is, this is prosperity gospel. This is name it, claim it. If you can tell God what you want, God will give it to you because God wants you to have what you want. Okay. But remember, your branches. What's a branch need? What's a branch want? What's a branch all about? I've already told you that. not Jesus. I mean, that's not the answer to the question. It's bearing fruit. So if, if you're, you know, if you ask, well, I can't even eliminate myself because there's all kinds of stuff I want. But if I'm thinking about myself as a branch that's attached to the vine, a branch needs to bear good fruit. So what, what's a branch going to ask Jesus for? What, we're going to ask God in Jesus' name for something. And as a branch, I'm going to ask that the fruit that I bear is abundant fruit. See, it's whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, not what I ask for in my name. And, you know, be specific about sizes and colors and, and the things that I want. As a branch attached to the vine, which is the love of God and that interconnectedness that runs between all of us. What I want and what I should want and what I should desire is that I would bear good fruit. Fruit that makes a difference. And so I want to ask God for the good, abundant, maximum fruit that I might be able to produce for the kingdom of God. Now, I love this passage because ultimately it's about the grace of God, about giving us something wonderful that we don't really deserve. I mean, we're attached to the vine, and we, have a, we can have a choice. We can, we can be disconnected from the vine. Um, then we're sticks, like these. They were cut off a couple of years ago and even painted black. For the, for the Lenten decor, but they're not branches anymore, they're sticks. Branches are attached to the vine, and when they're attached to the vine, they can do anything, and unattached, pruned off of the vine, they can do nothing. There they are, you can look at them, but they can do nothing. So this is a story ultimately about the grace of God, giving us abundant blessings, abundant love, even though, even though we haven't earned it. It's because God loves us. It's because God cares about us. Not that God wants us to have whatever we want, but that God dwelling within us and filling us with the desire to be good branches will fill us with the possibility of bearing good fruit for the kingdom of God. So this week, maybe, I guess here's, your, here's a challenge for you, is to look for opportunities to bear good fruit, knowing that the good fruit is the things that you say and do and think about that, that can change lives, that can change the world, that can um, open up doors for people whose doors seem like they're closed. And abiding in Jesus Christ, abiding with him, um, as branches attached to the vine, know that you are not alone, ever. You're not alone. Even through this pandemic, we're not alone. We've got Jesus Christ, who is the vine, and he has called us 
the branches. And the love that Jesus promises for us is the love that reminds us that God has called us, claimed us, saved us, and helps us to bear abundant fruit for the kingdom of God. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ, with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, lead your church to true repentance. Restore all that is broken and reconcile all people to you. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. Master designer, guard us from careless disregard of the earth and its treasures. Guide us in faithful stewardship of the soil, the water, the air, and all living things. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. Great Redeemer, grant the leaders of all nations a passion for peace and justice, and protect those who live or work in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. God of wholeness, grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Sustain all with your healing presence and give us the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, 
We give you thanks for all the faithful who have lived and died in you. Give us grace to trust in your promise of eternal life with those who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we entrust all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.